Hey everybody, thanks for coming to the channel today. We're going to show you how to turn your yard from this nastiness into this beautiful looking artificial turf and save you thousands of dollars. Artificial turf is worth it. Follow along today and I'll show you how to save half of the costs of installing. Hey everyone, thanks for coming back to the channel. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Today's project, actually a couple days, we're going to be uh, removing this sod and putting in artificial turf. And I'm just gonna document the process here. We've been struggling, as many people do, with the uh, reseeding every year and uh, having animals, the dogs tend to uh, urinate in the same spot every time which kills the grass and it's a continuing battle plus we're going to add a little bit of uh, a little bit more drainage so that the fire pit and patio paver area will not puddle so anyway uh, let's get to it we've rented the uh, four yard dump trailer and also the sod cutter the trailer rental was about 165 a day. The sod cutter, I think, was about 113 a day, and it's gas powered. It's a 18 inch wide unit. So with the sod cutter, to protect the sidewalk and the pavers, we've decided to go around the perimeter and remove sod. Clear out around the sprinklers. That way we can run the sod cutter away from the pavers to protect the uh, surface. give you an idea how much dirt piles up quick. This is a four yard trailer and it's probably half full for what the dump bed can actually handle because you get too much weight in there you're not going to be able to dump it. All right so we've dumped uh, the other load that was about that size and returned the comp or the uh, sod cutter and now we're on shovels locating sprinklers capping those off and pretty much just moving dirt got the teenagers on the shovels and with my assistance we got all the sod gone and we went down about uh, four to five inches there's another there's the first load of uh, quarter minus crushed rock that will start spreading tomorrow and then we'll get some border pavers out along there but uh, this is roughly 300 square feet I believe we have two yards of quarter inch minus down and we need another two yards as you can see I've compacted up against the uh, border over there and the size of pavers we're going to use approximately about like that we're going to come about halfway up on the quarter minus on the inside with the rock and do border all along that because that that old edging is pretty nasty and i have to plug a couple of sprinkler old sprinklers and we're going to pick up more rock and also pick up the turf with the uh dump trailer yeah that's about 480 square feet of turf and we've got another two yards of gravel got the pavers the edge pavers in mostly and then we've also got the sprinkler stubs capped off the right way
good to document where these things are in case you ever have a leak come up underneath. Yep. Today we got the uh, leveling all done. So now we're ready for the compactor. And got all the edging done, a little bit of backfill on the paver edges. Just use the uh, landscape rake there and two by fours to kind of scree across the top and make sure there's a slight slope away from the hard surfaces. And we'll rent the compactor next. <laughs> Action is done around the corners we had to use the hand tamper to get a little bit flatter but it looks like a pretty good compact solid surface we're gonna roll the turf out away from the house so that uh, we're not looking on the down side of the uh, fibers and that way it won't look so shiny you can see where I've marked the uh, 14 7 mark just a little extra because the rolls are 15 feet wide so we'll roll one out there and then we'll roll the shorter length one out here and then cut all right so i got curious and i can't stop but i wanted to see that they had the turf rolled properly as far as the orientation goes and it turned out that they didn't they uh that far end one was rolled backwards even though the blades fell the opposite direction of this one. So anyway, so we had to unroll it, re-roll it from the other end, roll it back up. But one of the things that you will hear the professionals talk about when they install this stuff is to make sure that whatever your primary viewing direction is from, you don't want to see the shine. So if we go over here and look toward the house, which is where you probably won't normally be, you're gonna see a lot of shine from the blades laying down toward that direction. And if we come over here, even from a side angle, it gets a little bit better. It gets better as you move this way. Of course, you're gonna rake it later to get those blades standing up more, but obviously this direction is a much better look. And that's the direction that we're gonna see from inside the house and from the patio. But these things were out in the rain for quite a bit, so we're going to leave them out for a few days and let them dry out before we put the final placement in, do the seams, and make the cuts. I didn't mention, I don't think, that this is the Ewing brand, the EPS turf, I guess is what it's called. And uh, this is called the Supreme uh, Pro, I think, or just Supreme. And the other one that they had was called the Pro 2 and this is supposed to be a little bit darker a little bit thicker and overall I'm really happy with the color and these two cuts look pretty much identical this week we got real lucky the weather turned and we got some nice hot weather and we're just doing the preliminary cuts to get it close and on the bottom here, you can see where we've got the uh, turf woven in here. And there's some threads there that will guide our cut. So uh, because this is not gonna be seen, it's, uh, it's not that critical to go you know, exactly straight, but we can follow this thread line here to go where we need to go. So we'll cut up to here, which is where the seam will be on the next piece and we'll get this all lined up nice and square. Make sure it lines up along there with the seam and we'll tack that corner down and just finish lining it up and cutting it. One thing I will say also, uh, before we laid all this out, I sprayed uh, Weed Killer, the 365 
one year supposedly all over the uh, gravel to try and help stop some of the weeds because we do have a big weed problem here. So anyway, um, I've got the seam right here and you can see I'm butting it right up against the pavers and then right up against the sidewalk here exactly in the corner. And so we're gonna tack that down with some, some of these six inch nails. Here we had a little curve along the sidewalk so rather than making it easy and just lining up the 90 degree angle there, I had to pull up a little bit on the sidewalk so I could fill in this corner. And uh, you can kind of see the outline of the timber that's underneath it. All right, now we're just going along the border here and leaving roughly a foot beyond that, just to give us a little wiggle room. and. We'll continue to kind of tighten it up, but we want to leave at least a foot and just go real slow and make sure we're leaving enough extra for in case we're off by a little bit. And this is why rectangles are your friend. You could have done, I've, I could have just done more seams out there, but I'm just gonna pay the extra, have a little waste and end up with one seam. So this is the, extra piece that I cut off from back there, 18 foot section. And that one over there, you can see we're gonna cut a ton of it out of there too. Okay, I wanna say something. Um, it you really need two people to do this job. I'm doing it, laying it out by myself right now, but it's hot enough that the stuff has expanded and it's laying down really nice and flat. Uh, you could get a uh, carpet puller or a carpet kicker it's a knee kick type thing that's going to help you stretch things out and uh but i'm just doing the preliminary cuts while it's hot leaving a little tiny bit extra as you can see there for uh contraction when it gets cooled but uh dragging this stuff around some of these rolls are about 300 pounds and when you have to go in between areas like the deck and all that it gets pretty pretty complicated and frustrating all right that was a big pain in the butt um, cut out the section there that goes around the tree and lots and lots of waste I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of comments from everybody on YouTube saying you know why didn't you just run it the other direction why didn't you make more seams and um, I already considered all of that so I knew there was gonna be some waste and if we can use this larger piece, maybe over in that area, that seam will be behind that beam there. We might be able to extend the grass uh, turf back in that direction, which would look pretty nice too. All right, we got all the preliminary cutting done. And I really like the look of this dark green. Supreme is the uh, model from Ewing. And it turned out real nice. And I think I actually have more enough scraps to do some back in there if I want to. But only planned on this part and I have quite a bit of extra scrap left over, which is, that's a lot of money sitting there. Okay, so we waited a few days and uh, now we're gonna do the seam. Got everything all trimmed up nicely and laid down. So uh, with the seam kit from Ewing, I got, uh, here comes with a large 29 ounce roll of the adhesive you're gonna have to buy one of these 29 ounce um, caulking guns it says uh, 13 inch 29 or 28 ounces anyway a little bigger than normal you need a spray bottle with water and basically what we're gonna do is just line up the seams. You see we've got the uh, seams trimmed here. Um, doesn't have to be exact, but we want the um, line of turf to be next to the other one, obviously, and approximately the same width as these here. So I've drawn a line down the middle of the, the backing and it comes in a roll like this. And uh, you want to put the glue 
on the rough side. There's a smooth, shiny side here that goes down on the dirt, or I mean on the rock, and then the rough surface here to help the uh, glue adhese. So looking down there, you can see I drew a line down the center to just line it up on the seams. I'll put a squiggly line of glue on both sides. All right, so I uh, popped the end off of the tube there and screwed on the nozzle, cut the end off, and we're ready to apply. Yeah, it kind of got messy there, but uh, I'm gonna do kind of a squiggly line on each side. All right, there's the applied glue, a work of art. So the bottle says to do the gluing between 50 and 90 degrees. Right now we're about 72. And to activate it, we are gonna spray um, water. We're gonna mist it. And apparently that activates the adhesive. Get some rocks in there. Sure, there's people watching this video that have probably done this more than I have. I'm probably a lot better at it. But just like to document this stuff. All right, so this is a relatively small seam. Your yard's probably going to have a lot longer one, but I purposely wanted a shorter seam to make it a little bit better. I have not roughed it up. I haven't rolled it yet, but we're going to roll it next. Uh, I just wanted to make sure all the turf fibers were separated and uh, it was starting to set up so now we're going to use a roller here and there's a different ones you can use you could even step on it here beside the seam but uh, I've got just a vinyl roller linoleum that I'm going to roll back and forth on both sides today we're just going to finish nailing and cutting and uh, on the edges that are already straight cut, I'm going to nail those first. Space the nails out about a, every 10 or 12 inches or so. And then once we've got the straight edges secured, we'll go ahead and trim all the rest of the grass. And uh, it'll start looking like it's supposed to look. So when we put the nail in, we want to try to put it between the row of artificial turf blades in the black part there. You can kind of see it's in between the two rows there. And then we just tap it down flush while we keep the blades spread so that it lands on the black base plastic there. only flush. All right, so we've got this all nailed down along this edge to this corner up to the seam. And then we're going to nail we're going to pull it tight since it's warm out. Well, that'll be perfect because we'll be able to pull it a little bit tighter. It's expanded right now, so we can pull it out, make sure all the wrinkles are gone. Make it tight nail it on the edges and then when it cools off it'll tighten back up even more which will get rid of any imperfections that there could have been but i don't think there would be the way that we did this and here's the nails that we're using here six inch smooth shank grip rights All right, we got most of it nailed and everything is cut. You can see all the scraps over there from the trimming of the edges and everything. 
Not as easy as I anticipated, but saving several thousand dollars at least. And the hardest part was doing these uh, curved pavers as far as the cutting goes. And um, you can see all the leftovers we have. We started with 480 square feet and we had to cut a section off of here and then the section back there behind the tree on that curvy spot. So probably just throw that up on for sale somewhere. Here's what the edges look like with the pavers. And we just have to nail down the rest of this spot back here. All right, folks, we're getting near the end of this project. Today we picked up our uh, turf infill, and this stuff is uh, a less expensive type. It's uh, green silica sand, basically. They do have some specialty types that will be twice as much. Uh, if you have a lot of pets in your backyard, big dogs, cats, whatever, that will actually have an antimicrobial property to them. The alternative to that is this cleaner. So I decided to get the cheaper infill. We only have one small dog, uh, and then just use the uh, bioenzyme cleaner that I got on Amazon, and I'll have a link to this in the description. But uh, basically we're gonna spread out this uh, infill, and it's gonna be about one and a half pounds per square foot. They recommend one and a half to two pounds. So I'm gonna start with this, and I can always add more later. Now the last video that we had, the last date, uh, now we're in mid-July, but anyway we finished up nailing and uh, pretty much just cleaning up around the edges. So it turned out pretty good. You can still see the seam because we haven't put the infill in yet. Once we get the infill down we'll be able to brush that out and you probably won't be able to see it hopefully. But uh, this stuff The drop spreader works best. I tried the uh, hand spreader and it's gonna go too slow. So what we're gonna do is cut some holes in the bottom of a bucket. So I'm just gonna drill and make several holes in the bottom of this bucket, fill it up as we go, and then walk around and spread it. All right, holes in the bottom of a bucket. Save a little money doing that rather than buying a drop spreader unless you know somebody that's got one. And a piece of cardboard down there to catch what falls through the cracks. Just dump some of this in here. Put it on the edge. And we're just going to evenly walk around and disperse the stuff. pretty good. I did learn this from another YouTuber. Um, lots of stuff out there, so I'm combining kind of everything that I've learned into this video to try and help you, uh, my subscribers, if you're going to tackle this project. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna spread out all 10 of these bags and then we're gonna broom it. Power broom works best, but if you don't have one, a good stiff shop broom will work too. All right, so the blades are facing or laying that direction because you wanna see them as they're laying down toward you. That way you don't get the shiny look. Um, so what we're going to do here in between bags is we're just going to brush these up and the idea with the infill is 
it will stand these up. The more infill we get, the more support they're going to get to stand up and look more natural like grass wood growing up. couple things to note uh, if you can rent a power broom from a rental place Home Depot rents them out it uh, does a lot more thorough job of beating the sand down into the bottom but this works good as well and the sand is just to hold down the turf flat put a little weight on it so that it doesn't ripple you know with uh, temperature changes and whatnot. All right, folks, so that is it. Please subscribe. I got a lot more videos on cool things, projects, how-tos, and everything. Uh, it turned out pretty good. The way they had this one cut rolled, the uh, edge of this grass was bent down the wrong way so probably gonna have to add a little bit more uh, infill to make it stand up more and I think as time goes by it'll probably settle down a little bit if I keep brushing it the other direction but overall pretty happy with it definitely better than the old real grass where the dog was peeing in that corner every year for 17 years and eventually I had a hump where I had reseeded it every year so this is nice and uh, once again thanks for watching please subscribe if you got any comments please shoot them my way I know it's not perfect I'm not a professional and I probably could have done th things a little bit differently but I welcome your comments follow the links below it helps support my channel thank you